welcome to a new episode of Facing the Void podcast. I always say this every single time, don't I? Welcome to a new episode. This one, believe it or not, it comes with a bit of a twist. Um, I'm joined by somebody who I recently connected with. And actually, to be honest with you, she doesn't know this, but I've been stalking her for a little while. And um, it's only because I actually came across some of her content on Instagram um, regarding the twin flame journey. And it genuinely helped me. The stuff that she put together actually helped me. And it just helped me understand things in a way that I needed to understand. So I'm so pleased. I'm so grateful to welcome Monica Grace uh, here with me today. She is a uh, trauma trained somatic coach, which I'm sure we will dive into what that means. She specializes in conscious relationships and is results driven in uh, healing trauma. And she has a depth of wisdom and personal mastery in the fields of sacred union and really in the principles of masculine and feminine polarity dynamics, which again, I'm sure we will dive into all of these wonderful, wonderful concepts. Maybe luckily for me, I'm not unfamiliar with a lot of these terms, but I'm looking forward to sharing what a lot of these things mean in, in this podcast and potentially future podcasts that we might do together. She's also an expert in intergenerational trauma healing, as well as healing from codependency, narcissistic abuse, and attachment trauma. And I can tell you from my heart that this woman is, is honestly a, a genuine inspiration. Her heart is full of gold. She really finds it her passion to heal people, people's relationship with their inner masculine and feminine. You know, that's what it's really all about when it comes to this twin flame journey. And um, she's super successful. She mentors women from all over the world and has worked with thousands, thousands of women going through their spiritual or twin flame awakening, helping them to release unconscious self-sabotage, heal their core wounds and reclaim their inner wholeness. Have I introduced you well enough, Monica? Can I do any better? Oh, no. <laughs> no, you've done an absolutely amazing job. Thank you so much for for the beautiful warm welcome and the beautiful introduction. I'm super honored to be here and to be able to connect with all of you all around the world and, and hopefully share some insights that inspire you to look within and li live your best life, you know, heal to be able to live your best life. So um, thank you again. And uh, I can't wait to dive in to explore a few interesting juicy topics that we've been stewing over with Sarah recently um, and, and her wealth of wisdom in, on the subject is just immense too and I'm just excited to be able to dive in deep and, and, and hopefully inspire some of the listeners to do the same as we kind of go along um, yeah. to get on this journey. Perfect, perfect. I mean we, we made a joke a little bit earlier before we started recording about you know sharing wisdom from two sides of the pond because you're actually in Australia and I'm sitting here in London. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I've had this opportunity to to to, to sky over to Australia in November last year um, in the middle of the COVID when no flights were flying globally. Um, there was some synchronistic um, magic that happened where we've been kind of notified by Singapore Airlines that a two ticket had two tickets have become available due to a cancellation and if we wanted so we had to literally pack our bags in under two weeks or entire flat and leave the UK 20 years of my life I've spent living in the UK and and that's really where I grew up so I I hold the country the people uh, you know it's in my heart it, it, you the entire UK has helped me grow has helped me heal and, and reconnect to my core self, my truest essence. So I'm deeply grateful for the journey, deeply grateful for the people, for the country. And yeah, now I'm finding myself in this Aussie land, still trying to find my feet here and get used to it. Especially though the weather, the fact that it's winter at the moment when I should be getting ready for the summer. Uh, so it's all upside down, it's all over the place. It sounds pretty divinely guided to me, but you know, so anyone listening who doesn't believe in manifestation, I'm sure if me and you share a few stories about our lives, you, you, you're going to oh. might think differently because you know oh what? My God. when you experience too much, it's when you experience too much and you're like the probability of all of these things happen 
in the way that they have happened is just too much. <laughs> That's the way I think of it. It's just too much. It's like, you know, anyone who's science minded and, I, and believe it or not, I am actually science minded <laughs> when it comes to spirituality and in business as well. You know, the definition of an incident is when something doesn't work one time. The definition of a problem is when multiple incidents happen to do with the same issue. And mm. I keep saying to people, your life, everyone's thinking in terms of incident mentality. They're dealing with one issue after the other, after the other, without recognizing mm. that a lot of these incidents, when you clump them together, they're just highlighting underlying problems, core problems that are then manifesting themselves in little incidents, little one-off things, one relationship here another relationship there your relationship at work people think none of these things are connected the relationship with your family the relationship that you have with your friends oh my love it is super connected <laughs> i couldn't agree enough it is i really believe that your entire journey is so divinely guided and the funny thing is that most of us sort of often think that we are the victims in of the circumstances or sometimes unfortunate events, but actually we are the creator of creators of it. We are at the heart of it. And we co-create with the universe, with the divine, God, whatever you want to call it, every single experience that happens to us. So back to the manifestation. I've actually um when I began my spiritual awakening back in 2012. I had this vision of living by the sea and I didn't know what it meant because I've never really up, on, up until that point seen myself living by the sea. But something began awakening within me, this vision, and it kept becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And I simply allowed myself to surrender into it and honor it and just allowed it to show me the way. Mm. And fast forward, you know, to um, 2020, you know, we find ourselves with my partner on the plane leaving the UK, which I've really never seen it coming, you know, leaving the UK and moving down under and beginning our lives in Australia. <laughs> so and it shows that the more we allow ourselves to be guided by our, by our soul and connect to the truth of who we are, the more these experiences sort of fell, fall into our lap. And these incredible miracle synchronicities happen. It's not magic. It, I, to me, it's more of a, our soul orchestrating these experiences to help us grow, to help us come into greater alignment with our purpose, with the reason why we are here. And, um, and it all makes sense. I like Steve Jobs beautifully said, like, it all makes sense only when you look back and connect the dots, but I've kind of came to a point in my life where I, I allow myself to be guided by my soul. I, I led myself to go on to the, you know, the journey of discovery, um, going to the unknown because I, I sort of seen it far too many times that when we go into the unknown, that's where the magic happens. We allow ourselves to step outside of our comfort zone and we grow the most when we are going through new life experiences we don't grow in our comfort zone we grow the most when we are exposed to something new new people new environment new challenges um and 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 it pushes us to become i think in, in some ways even more connected to the core of who we are because you know like with everything we're having to make decisions um choices and every choice, every decision has a consequence, some are positive, some are negative. So all of these things combined, mm. you know, it, 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 it is a journey. It is a journey of constant evolution. But once you kind of reconnect to the core of who you are, you feel like you found your best friend. Oh, yeah. And no matter where you are in the world, you're always at home with yourself. So you're no longer scared of traveling, no longer scared of exploring, no longer scared of like leaving the country you've lived in your entire life and going somewhere else because you found your true home within yourself. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Hang and, on, Monica. And, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. I, I need to <laughs> I okay. need to speak on behalf of the skeptic of in the in the minds of the listeners right now, because okay. I understand exactly what you're talking about, but I'm talking about it from a perspective where I think me and you have been on a journey 
we've been on a real journey and we're going to be talking about a lot of this part of this journey and a part of that journey meant that we had to really go through some low lows well I had to definitely go through some low low lows to be able to get to this point and the thing is for people listening there's always going to be the voice in the head that says, great, that's okay for you. I'm so happy that you're able to manifest. I'm so happy that you're feeling in a peace. I'm so happy that, you know, you're in a place where you can like do all the things that you want to do. That sounds great. But actually that doesn't resonate maybe with where I'm, I'm at right now. Do you see what I mean? So I want to talk to that, that voice that might be in some people's heads right now that says, oh my God, this woman, it sounds amazing. I'm enchanted. I'd love to know more. However, this is not my reality right now. And mm-hmm. that's very normal because I listen to podcasts and stuff like that. And I, and I kind of hear people. And um, sometimes even that voice comes into my head where I'm just like, this sounds like spiritual blah, blah to me. Like you guys are just talking rainbows, unicorns and freaking fairy dust. And I, <laughs> I don't know about that. Like I do know about that. Don't get me wrong. I talk peace and love all the time. But there's some, t- some things that you know, true spirituality is almost like a borderline between spirituality and psychotherapy, to be honest, really intense psychotherapy is what spirituality means to me. And it's long, (laughs) and it's boring, and it's tough. And you know, the the point I think of this conversation today that we've been talking about, if we really get into it now, is, uh, is is we want to talk about the three, three things that I wish that I knew when I was awakening, because the truth is, it's maybe safe to say that you've certainly been through your awakening. I feel like I've definitely done something that has woken me. And, and the reason I feel that way is because like my third eye ability has really, really increased a lot lately and like meditation and all those good things have come to me very naturally and a lot easily. And I think those are some of the symptoms of awakening. Once you've awoken, these things come to you very naturally. So that's beautiful. and Mm -hmm. And I love it. But at the point at which someone does awaken, I think we've come together with three kind of things that we'd like them to know. And yeah, you talked about your awakening in, in 2012, I think you said. So you had your awakening, uh-huh. is it? So, yeah. so if you were to go back to the Monica in 2012, tell me about what you would tell the Monica of 2012 now. If you were able to speak to your old self, what would you tell her? And what kind of things would you yeah. want her to know? Okay. Well, believe me or not, I, was, I wasn't always this spiritual and enlightened and happy and smiley. You should have seen me in 2012, 2013. Um, I was a wreck, emotionally drained. I was working in a corporate job, working kind of crazy long hours till two, three o'clock in the morning, deadline after deadline. Um, stuck in a rat race. I was so unfulfilled and disconnected from who I was. I didn't know where I was coming or going. I felt like I was stuck in this rat race. That's the only way to put it. Of constant sort of ex- meeting expectations, meeting deadline, chasing goals. Mm. I was deeply unfulfilled. There was so much pain that was inside of me that I was used to just numb myself down, push it all down, ignore the pain, or let's just go and buy another dress or uh, go out with friends and distract myself from how I was truly feeling. I didn't want to face any of that. That was deeply painful and uncomfortable to me. And to be honest, I didn't understand any of that. I thought that everybody is like that, that we are all meant to just, you know, keep up with the Joneses, get the next promotion, you know, climb the career ladder, go out with friends, have fun, you know, get get a partner. You know, the, the usual sort of prescribed way of life that everybody strives for, you know, the, the happiness, the love, the, the career, the money, the health. We're all chasing these things, but uh, the way we're going about it can often feel deeply disconnected from our own truest essence from who we truly are and I wasn't any different I had no idea about spirituality I uh, even the the fact that I was working in a corporate job all of that it wasn't of my own truest choice I took the job where I started marketing and business for years (laughs) just to please my mother that, that wasn't a choice that came from my soul. It was something that I kind of, I, I believe I have to be like that. Wow. 
and and like it was only leading me. The more it went on, I um, mean, another promotion, another uh, like, uh, opportunity, another company, um, different group of friends, what have you. The more this went on, that I felt like the I the more disconnected I was becoming from who I truly am, and I was putting on this charade, had this mask on, pretending to be happy to the outside world. But deep down within me, I was dying. I felt like I was dying. That's how I felt. And then it hit me. Like one one day, I um, not really one day, there was a lead up to, to the experience. I've actually gone through what a lot of people call a spiritual twin flame awakening. I've met this beautiful soul who came into my life and out of the blue and deeply triggered me to the point that initially I've experienced this most incredible love and connection with this person mm -hmm. only for that to be abruptly taken away from me a few months later and I found myself literally sobbing on the floor for nearly, like, nearly six to eight months, maybe even a year in such a tremendous pain and a shock from it all that I just didn't know what the hell happened to me. I suffered from depression and anxiety and I had suicidal thoughts. I literally, I was hit by, <laughs> by this shock of um, kind of um, awakening. And I started questioning my entire existence. Why the hell am I here? What am I doing here? Why the hell this person I love so much just, just you know, took off and left me in such pain? And like probably most listeners, I began searching. I began searching for answers. What the hell does this mean? What am I have? What is happening to me? How to help myself get better? Mm -hmm. and, and it just sort of one thing led to another. And I just sort of kept searching for answers simply with the intention to make myself feel better or heal something within me that was asking to be seen, to be held, to be loved. And at the time, I didn't even know that I've spent 20 years of living with a mother who had very brutal narcissistic tendencies, like malignant narcissistic tendencies. Oh, we will get into that, no uh, doubt, we, if, yeah. you, if you're comfortable. And I was oh. so suppressed and shut down mentally, emotionally, living, literally living in in survival mode, people pleasing, codependent, chasing luck from the outside of me. And I had to like, like, how am I living my life? And I'm curious, obviously, Sagittarius, curiosity, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so looking back now at that 2012 or before-ish version of you, and clearly you've got lots of insight at this point when you talk about that version of you and what was really going on mm -hmm. underneath the surface, um, could you see, like, what do you see now in terms of the purpose of that kind of real depression or that kind of real low, low that you experience? Could you see now why that was almost, was it necessary? And could you see why? Well, fast forward a few years later, I kind of, I, I came to realize why, so many of us, especially parent time, go through this journey, whether we are awakened through a twin flame or have a spiritual awakening of some kind. Um, I really believe there is one common purpose behind all of this, and that is to help us to reconnect us to our truest essence and our purpose here on earth. Pablo Picasso has this beautiful quote around um, like the meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give that gift away to other people. Mm -hmm. And I really love it because it, it sort of, I deeply resonate with that. Like in my own journey, I initially done everything I possibly could to, to heal myself from all the pain and traumas I've been through. And later on, I felt guides to actually start sharing um, all those tools and the healing methods with others who are going through a similar process um, because I've, I've came to realize how incredibly important this is and how so liberating and so enriching this whole journey is. I really like to, to kind of backtrack a little bit. I believe that we are all 
a soul having a human experience. So the soul is immortal and infinite and powerful. And in its purest essence, that energy of the soul is love and joy. Mm. So that's when we are in, in non-physical form. What happens then, this is prior to incarnating onto the earth plane, but what happens to us, we then kind of in, choose a family and we are incarnated onto the earth plane. We are born in, in this family where both of our parents, they have their own wounding, they've been through their own traumas, they have their own limited sort of conditioning and indoctrinations and so so on and so forth. And we sadly adopt all of that as children mm. because a child has to make a very important decision. The very first decision every single one of us has to make, do I stay authentic to my own heart, to my own self, to my own true values, needs, desires? Or do I abandon myself and start conforming to my parents' society, societal, religious, you know, teacher's school expectation of how I should be, who I should become. And this becomes the, the, the decision that then drives the rest of our lives because most children know, even at such a young age, that our entire survival depends on the love and approval of our parents. So we, we often abandon ourselves we abandon our, our truth, heart, souls, desires, and our truth. And we start conforming, people pleasing, um, conforming to the expectations of our parents, society, culture, religion. And it, it, we then grow up, you know, fast forward a few years later, in our 20s, 30s, when we are actually asked to step into relationships, a career, um, into our the life that we want to be living and most of us don't know most of us don't know who we are we are so disconnected from ourselves that we have no idea who we are at the core of us this well monica come on, let's be honest here the whole idea mm -hmm. of we don't know who we are we don't even know that we don't even know who we are yeah that's okay. not even in the periphery of consciousness we don't mm -hmm. even know that you know you're talking about you know i believe that we're a soul and there's a soul immortal and we're you know oprah always talks about this you know do you believe that you are a spiritual being having a human experience do you believe that because if you believe that you're going to believe a few other things about your life <laughs> and i 100 believe it. oh me too i feel like mm -hmm. did, did you have like sort of uh, experiences of past lives Oh, yeah. And flashbacks of past yes. life as you were going through your own journey. Oh, yes. Uh, we, we, we talk about that in another podcast. That is a whole okay. podcast, <laughs> my darling. That is a whole podcast. Because okay. I've had, I think, five different past life experiences now. Mm -hmm. Five-ish. So it's been more than one. And again, that's that's another freaky thing about it because more than one. But we, we, we will talk about that. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> one of our podcasts that we're going to do okay. which will be past lives um so what i'm hearing is that you've been through some stuff uh terrible stuff mm -hmm. and that stuff has basically what been a trigger a perfect trigger so that trigger was not only just in your work life that trigger you realized from your from your parental relationship it manifested itself in a relationship with with a, a partner or a twin flame or whoever a relationship so a romantic soul kind of relationship. And ultimately, you learned some stuff from these triggers, right? You learned some stuff. And that's mm -hmm. why you're sitting here talking to me today about the gift that you're sharing with the world, which is your experience. Because that's all we ever have is the gift of our experience and what we learn from it. So mm -hmm. with that kind of awakening journey that you undertook to basically get you from A to B where you are now. So if A is I felt shit my life was, wasn't going in the right place. My attention was focused on all, all the wrong things. And I felt tired. Mm -hmm. I just felt tired. I felt unfulfilled. And I felt like my life wasn't going in the direction that I knew inside myself that something wasn't right. Because I, I completely resonate with that, by the way. I've had a very, very identical experience in a lot of the things that you're talking about. And so for, for you then, when you came to the point where you realized that You'd been triggered and you, you, I'm guessing you knew something had to change. You knew that you couldn't continue doing the same things that you were doing again and again, because my belief is that that moment at which 
everything feels terrible and you have that kind of depression because I've also gone through a twin flamey style thing in my life. And I've experienced that low where you just think, oh my God, like I've never experienced a love like this before. Like this person, I look into their eyes and I actually feel like I love them. Like how, how? I don't understand that. Mm. And like my heart felt like it would be exploding just, and not in a hormone racy way. Like it was nothing to do with that. It felt really, um, it felt beyond me. It felt beyond my uh, understanding or experience of love, like more than I've ever experienced with any familial relationship or sisterhood relationship or brother relationship. It was beyond that. It was a love that I just felt like, Hey, I've know you, I know you, I know you. And I also know that I love you. And I, and I know that I don't know you as a person, but I know that I feel so much for you and I don't understand it. And it felt healing, but also very, very triggering because they really prod at your deepest, darkest wounds um, through their unconscious actions is how I experienced it. So in that journey, I'm just curious for you, when did you start to realize that you were thinking and feeling in a way that wasn't going to serve you? When did you start to realize that there's something about the way that you were thinking about the situation that you knew that you needed to do it differently? What was that for you? So for me, um, I believe the moment of having my core wounds activated and triggered through my twin flame awakening was the moment where I felt as though a rug was pulled from underneath my feet. And from that point onwards, everything I knew, everything I knew that was familiar to me, that was dear to my heart, I literally started to crumble and leave my reality. And it was the most frightening experience. But I've later on came to realize why this happens. You know, some of the listeners may relate to this um, part of the journey where, you know, in our spiritual awakening, suddenly people start to leave us. You know, maybe people are asked to leave the job um, they've been in for, for a while and they're really comfortable in or some sort of loss or heartbreak happens. And it, I believe it, it happens with the purpose of activating our deepest, deepest, deepest core wound. And that core wound is linked very often to our childhood. Mm. And to me, I believe that we actually, we are prepared for our purpose in childhood. It starts in childhood when we are being prepared for our purpose. And the biggest thing that you didn't get in your childhood is what is then triggered through your spiritual awakening so for example for me it was love I spent probably 20 years of my life while I was still living with is my that parents you that for I, everyone my darling come on love is the core behind what we all want yeah absolutely but for other people it could be health a breaking down it could be a loss of someone they care about it could be wealth having financial difficulties it could be Okay. Challenges with, with expression and voice and success and visibility. You know, it could be different for different people, but um, th- th- there is a purpose behind that because that, that trigger of your core wounds is linked to what you didn't get in your childhood mm-hmm. in, in a very significant, profound way. Mm-hmm. So um, t- t- to explain from my personal perspective, And I know many listeners will probably be able to relate to this. I felt most of my life, most of my childhood, as if though I wasn't lovable. I felt as if though I was unworthy, undeserving of love. My mother, father, they kept me at at an arm's length. Um, My mother especially was very abusive towards me. And for a child to experience something like that, you end up internalizing how you are treated and you end up justifying it in a way that there must have been something wrong with me if the person who was supposed to love me unconditionally was treating me that way. And we then kind of develop all kinds of conditioning, limiting beliefs, um, unconscious sort of limiting stories that hold us away from the very thing that we desire we chase love from the outside of ourselves we end up people pleasing and being codependent believing that 
we have to suppress ourselves and chase someone on the outside of us, you know, to earn love, to be worthy and deserving. But actually, you know, we are already loved. There is nothing to earn, nothing to chase. And I really believe that this whole purpose of this journey is for that spiritual awakening to actually trigger that core wound within us, the big, biggest, deepest pain that we bury so deeply that it's almost completely unconscious to us. It sits below our conscious awareness. We are not aware of it. We have all kinds of coping mechanisms and defense mechanisms that are um, that are sort of keeping us in a in the survival mode, pushing even pushing love away um, very often us not being emotionally available with other people because we are not emotionally available to ourselves. We abandon ourselves and we feel like from the outside Mm. and all kinds of other things that actually block us from living life that is truly full and enriching and fulfilling. So that as you awaken, you will be guided to go down this path of um, reconnecting to these core wounds, to your core traumas, to the things you've experienced in your childhood, whether you didn't get what you wanted, meaning the love, approval, affection, um, safety. Maybe, you know, you have been abused similarly to me. Maybe you were neglected or maybe it's just simply your parents gave you everything you possibly wanted physically and materialistically, but they didn't have that connection and bond with you because they were so shut down themselves and were not emotionally available to you and every child needs the emotional bond every child needs that love and unconditional approval so we then kind of those deepest wounds are triggered with the intention with the purpose for us to become aware of it and begin the process of healing that so that we can emerge from the journey being you know, reborn, if you like, but more so a little bit more connected to the core of who we truly are. Because once we, the, the whole purpose of the spiritual awakening is, at least in my view, is for us to heal the layers of the trauma so that we discover what is beneath that, the oh, truest, yeah. most, most authentic essence. Mm-hmm. Um, the things that really kind of make us feel alive, joyous, fully expressed, so that we are no longer hiding and kind of suppressing ourselves, but we are allowing ourselves to shine and blossom and express our truth. And it is a journey. It is a magnificent journey. Um, it can be a very painful journey. And there are so many things to learn and so many things to master. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, but uh, it is probably one of the most beautiful journey of soul liberation that allows you to actually probably for the first time live in alignment with who you truly are rather than conform and people please to how others want you to be. And, and it, let's let's go back going. again because I'm going to talk from the behalf of the skeptic. <laughs> the skeptic yeah. <laughs> mind. He's sitting there oh. listening to you and saying, Monica, amazing. I love hearing all of this. But you know mm-hmm. what? I'm not living where you're living. I'm not living in Australia where it's nice and hot. I didn't just manifest that out of the blue. I'm not, you know, giving my gift out to the world. I'm not doing all the things that I want to do. Um, but what I'm hearing from you, from the things that you're sharing today, is that, you know, we, we spoke about this earlier before, before we recorded. We said, um, well, I said that spirituality and psychology or intense psychotherapy are almost the same thing. Like real spirituality is like seriously intense psychotherapy and continuously, mm-hmm. because from what you're saying about the trauma and uncovering the bonds, I, I, I already know that you're, you know, psychotherapist and you're highly, highly skilled at what you do. And, you know, some people might call it depression. <laughs> some people call it anxiety, but between us, because we've gone down this almost the spiritual psychology route, we're calling it a dark night of the soul. It's really the same thing, but from two different coins. And I just wanted to share for the person or people who might be listening 
And they're coming at it from a point of, you know, in society or everyday life, we call it mental health. You know, we call it mental health challenges. We say, oh, you know, I've got depression. Oh, I'm using antidepressants or, you know, that kind of method to be able to manage my emotions and manage my feelings. And obviously Mm -hmm. people should know that um, a pill is not the only and not the best way to be able to manage your emotional state. Actually, therapy, therapy healing is the answer for sure Mm -hmm. and so when we're talking about awakening I think what we're both saying here is that we've both experienced real low lows and society might call that depression I'm starting to kind of see it that way maybe Um, but actually I see it as the dark night of the soul and I've seen how I have evolved through those little periods where I've had such lows and I, and I and I wish like you, if I was speaking to my younger self and the, the kind of version of me, again, your story and my story is crazy similar. And we actually haven't spoken about this, but like you, I was working in a corporate job and I was very successful, very young, to be honest with you. I was very blessed. I, I, I got somewhere very quickly, very, very quickly. And I was consulting for, for large corporates. And I remember being in a boardroom with, with a very large insurance firm. And we were sitting with like some board of director people and there's me sitting there, little me. And we're sitting in the room and I'm sitting there while the three men in the room are basically arguing with each other. And I feel like I'm their mother. I swear to God in that meeting, I feel like I'm their mother. I feel like I'm policing them and I'm telling them, can you please calm down? We can figure out a way to deal deal with this. And I remember sitting to myself afterwards and I was thinking, this is not my life. I don't want to be spending the rest of my life babying grown men as to how they should speak to each other. This is not why I'm here. And it triggered me, boom, into a real dark night of the soul where I'm just like, why am I here? What the hell am I doing here? I don't get the point of this. I need to figure some stuff out. And I was triggered. I was really triggered. And and, and I wish if I spoke to myself now, if anyone's ever been through mental health or they see it as dark night of the soul or they don't, it doesn't really matter. But when you're going through something like that, I I wish I knew that A, it's temporary. And I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but I I wish I knew that, you know, the feelings that you feel and the thoughts that you think, they're like clouds or buses. They come and they go and they really do. And it's only through my meditation practice that I can really hone in on that idea. But I wish Mm -hmm. I understood that because when you're in the deepest, darkest depths of just feeling absolute rubbish and you're just like stuck and you're lost and all the, no one around you is really helping. They're kind of reinforcing the same BS. Your family are just doing your head in as well. So you're just in the cycle Mm -hmm. of dealing with them. And then your work's doing your head in and everything's just like, blah, (laughs) the best (laughs) I can describe it, blah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, I don't even see an end to this. Like, what do I do? Do I quit now? Do I do something else? Like, you're just really thinking about what your options are. And I wish, Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish someone, and someone probably did say this to me, like, Sarah, don't worry, you're going to be okay. Someone probably said that to me. You're going to be okay. And saying that you're going to be okay also includes it's going to pass. You're going to get over it. And I've had to Mm -hmm. add three versions of this, and there have been different depths of it. But I know now if it, if it happens to me again <laughs> from this point, I know for sure that it's going to pass in, you know, every time I've go through this now, I have so much strength in realizing that it's part, it's going to pass. And the last thing I can say, and I'd, I'd, and I'd love to hear your comments about this or your thoughts about this is I wish that I could say to myself that I wish I could see myself in the future from now. Obviously, I know it's not possible because I can't see myself in 10 years. I can't see myself in 20 years. But I wish at that point, or was it five, six years ago, I could look at myself and see the version that I am today because I couldn't see this version of Sarah. And if I could see this version of me now from that point where everything was really crap, I would know for sure that these dark nights of the soul, these bouts of depression or anxiety or these bouts of just feeling blur, they're ultimately for my highest good. Because what I'm sitting here knowing now, entrenched in my values now, the bliss that I feel inside myself now, all this thing that sounds spiritual and woo-woo, I'm a soul and, you know, I feel bliss and my soul feels like unicorn rainbows. I'm saying that that's kind of true. (laughs) You can get to a point of, of feeling good, 
But I'm saying that you need to kind of go through cleansing yourself on a very deep level, cleansing the underlying limiting beliefs within your mind, doing super intense psychotherapy. Like I've done serious psychotherapy, serious energy healing, serious like bouts of meditation, uh, which is also a psychotherapy technique in its best form, hypnotherapy, you know, all these things I've really done because I've actively wanted to prioritize my emotional state more than anything else. And once I learned to prioritize mm -hmm. that and stop ignoring myself instead of prioritizing my job, prioritizing my career, prioritizing holidays. Oh, what new adventure can I go on? Let me go on an adventure. Um, what new next party can I go to? You know, all those things. Yeah. Once I deprioritize that and start prioritizing me and start dealing with my mm -hmm. own crap, whew, all of this stuff was for my highest good, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Wow. It, it, I just know, obviously, having spoken to you a few times, it, how much work you've done for yourself. And I really want to honor you for that because this stuff isn't easy. And anyone out there who is trying to tell you that the spiritual awakening is a love and light and unicorns is full of BS. Because um, I've worked with hundreds, thousands of women from around the world, and I, every single one of them has gone through what they call the dark night of the soul. But actually, I dare to differ a little bit and no longer call it the dark night of the soul because I see soul as this energy of purity and love and truly the, the highest joy that we can ever be in. Like if you recall, I'm sure every single one of us has a, at least one moment in our lives where we felt in such a pure bliss, in a peace and harmony with ourselves. And it's like, you know, wow, my life is magical. And I believe that this is what we are kind of almost like reconnecting to through this journey by peeling the layers of trauma, layers of onion, as if it's to get to the juicy center of that bliss and love. And I actually now call it more, more of a dark night, dark night of the ego because what's happening throughout the oh, yeah. awakening? Hang on, that's too good. Let's just dark night breaking, of the ego. Yeah. That is accurate. Yeah, we are breaking down the old disempowering construct of the persona that we have built from childhood up to now. We are releasing any limitations, limiting beliefs, trauma, limited perceptions. Um, we are learning to trust again. We are learning to release doubt. We are mm. learning to feel safe in our bodies, to be intimate with ourselves and then be able to be intimate emotionally intimate with other people mm. to be able to be vulnerable to be able to be authentic true stand in our power in our light and really own ourselves on a level like we've never done before because most of the indoctrinations that we have sadly adopted from whether parents culture religion and society are, are all telling us stay small, don't be visible, shut up and conform. And this holds us back. And we have to overcome a lot of these challenges to allow ourselves to be visible, to be seen, to feel safe, to step into our power, to shine and thrive and share our gifts that we are here to, to share with the world. So you have no idea how incredibly challenging and, and often painful, this entire journey of peeling those layers of the onion can be because we are, uh, we are asked to release it. And releasing feels to us like losing something that we know. And for that very reason, we, we want to hold on to it because knowing something is better, at least to our ego, than going into the unknown. We are all programmed to fear the unknown. So we don't want to, you know, put ourselves through a journey that is scary and God knows what's going to happen. God knows who am I becoming in the end. So we, we, we shy away from that and, and we hold on to what we know and we think that that gives us the safety. At least I know, you know, you know, where I stand. I have so many women I've coached who have been, for example, living in toxic relationships and and when I asked them, you know, why do you stay? Why did you stay for 30 years? Well, 
you know, God knows what else is out there. At least I know where I stand. And like, is that is that enough for you to live for the rest of your life with someone who is deeply? Oh, Monica, abusive? stop it! Don't get me started. Do you not get yeah. me started on stuff like that? <gasps> we'll, we'll end up be talking oh. for the next two hours, and I'll be going oh, no. on a little, little rampage. But but it's really kind of releasing that victim with consciousness and stepping into the radical self responsibility. Like I, I can do this. I can go into the unknown. I can create a vision for who I want to be. And allow that to pull me because the soul will pull us forward. Yes. And the fear often holds us back. So mm. this is why it is a dark night of the ego because the ego likes to hold on to what we know. And the soul, it actually pushes us forward towards expansion and growth. So, so right. it is not a dark night of the soul. It is a dark night of the ego where we are required to release any victim who to step into radical self-responsibility and become the creators of our destiny. That's why we are here. That's why we are here on this earth. And we are all meant to shine and thrive and live our best life. Um, and when you allow yourself to do that and, and even ask for support, if you don't know how to do this yourself, get a coach. Sarah is a beautiful, amazingly talented coach herself. I am a coach myself. And a coach is someone, especially trauma-trained coach, is someone who will be able to work with you on the things that have blocked you or made you feel stuck in your journey, any fears, any blocks, any self-sabotage. And they will be able to um, help you to unblock that, release that, and also help you to connect to your goals. Like, where do you really want to go? What do you want to experience in your life instead? And asking for help, especially on things that you don't know how to do yourself. It is an immense sign of of power because mm. it's like asking an expert, you know, you have a broken car and you want it to run again, you want it to be fixed. You ask an expert to help you fix your car. The same applies to the healing mm. and ascension process. You ask an expert to help you and accelerate your journey forward so that you... You, you feel much more safe and comfortable to step into your own power. You get tools, guidance, and strategies to help you grow and become the creator of your destiny. And, and the more you allow yourself to do that and peel those layers of the things that held you back in life, the, the more you actually allow yourself to release the judgments, victimhood, complaining, moaning, you know, misery, that you've had in your life because you were either not knowing how to fix that or you didn't have the tools or you didn't have the support. So asking for support is incredibly powerful in my view. The mm -hmm. idea of sometimes asking for support can feel shameful and it can feel mm -hmm. like very uncomfortable. But I, I just think I, I knew that this conversation was going to be brilliant and I've, I've gotten so much from this conversation. I you, you really brought to the table a, a level of energy and a level of knowledge and uh, intuition and wisdom that's been really wonderful for, for me to experience as you let me kind of uh, work with you today. And I'm so grateful for that. And, and a few of the things that you just shared there, so powerful. I almost feel like it's, it's a nice natural end at this point. Any final thoughts that are coming to mind right now? I just would like to say maybe one thing that we in life don't create or don't get what we want but we get who we are so the more we release the traumas and the pain and become the pure channel the, the higher vibrational match we are to what we are actually wanting to attract into our reality so going back to the manifesting that it becomes that much easier for you to then manifest the things that you long for, you in your heart, you deeply, deeply want, because none of those traumas and those blocks and fears and self-sabotage and coping mechanisms will be stand, standing in your way anymore. You will be free and liberated from it all. So you naturally uh, magnetize to you the things that you desire, especially women. Women don't realize that we are magnetic. The people who are predominantly kind of feminine in their nature, in their orientation, are magnetic, really deeply magnetic. And those who are more dominant in their masculine orientation are electric. 
both are incredibly powerful and knowing how to kind of attract the things that you truly desire um, into your life um, is, is, is super powerful and potent for you to actually be able to stand in your truth and live your best life. And healing your trauma is one, probably for me, one of the most important things that you can ever do for yourself to take your power back, to release the things that no longer serve you and allow yourself to actually be present in your authentic essence because that's when you magnetize and attract and receive. You will be open, you will feel safe to hold it, to have it, to live it, to experience it. And it's truly one of the most delicious way of living your life. So that's how I would kind of like to end this conversation that it's, um, this whole spiritual awakening is not happening to hurt you or to make you miserable. It's actually happening for you, for your highest mm. good, for your growth, for you to evolve and become that magnetic creator of your of your destiny. And anyone can do that. Anybody out there, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you've been through. Um, anyone can do this with the right support, the right guidance. It just takes your time. It just takes a willingness. Mm. Absolutely just takes yeah. a willingness. Look, Absolutely. Um, uh, I just have so enjoyed this. Uh, please, I have, I'm going to be including Monica's details, how you can get in touch with her, everything you need to know about her or description of this podcast. Check that out. Go check out her Instagram. Go check out her content. Love it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I think we might actually end up doing this again soon because this was actually too good. And I enjoyed it a bit too much. So, so much. let us know what your thoughts were. Please, uh, I'm going to put my details as well. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, feedback, love to hear it. We want to hear what you think. We want to, well, I want to hear what you took away from this conversation. Because believe me, that is one of the first steps towards you demonstrating, not to me and not to Monica, your own willingness to yourself. That actually what you've picked up today is actually resonating something in, in you. And if it has, allow yourself to explore it. And I'd be more than willing to hear it out and explore it with you. You know, it's free to talk. It's free to comment, guys. You know, you don't have to worry about that. Just engage in the conversation because believe me, it's another step as part of your process. And I am so honored that you listened to us today and that you engage with us today. And I look forward to speaking with you all again. And you, Monica. So thank you for your thank time. Thank you so much for having me. I immensely enjoyed your conversation and I look forward to reading your comments and your insight into your own awakening journey. And if perhaps if you have any questions for us that we can address in the next uh, episodes. Thank you so much again for having me.